Awesome. So you guys are learning so much from marketing to side gigs to making the biggest one of the biggest decisions of your dental career, selling your dental practice to a private practice dentist or a DSO. Two things to work on, biceps and knee, but I do it every day. You should too. So uh, our last guest, I cannot wait to talk to him. He's a special to me. So before we talk about anything he does, this person looking at you was in charge of helping me get through dental school. And that was not an easy task. He was doing the work of the Lord G.B. Black, helping third and fourth year dental students learn how to not be terrible at dentisting. So before you tell us about your uh, company and being a sponsor, tell us, bring us back to the olden days and tell us about being a dental school instructor. Yeah, so um, Paul, always good to see you. Um, this goes back to the, what, the early 2000s? 2002, like, yeah. 2002. So I was in the uh, the specialty program at the time and I got the, the great um, opportunity to work with uh, dental students. And let me tell you something, there's nothing better than working with dental students because oftentimes um, they look like they've got a blank uh, stare on their face and to go up there and teach them, be their friend and guide them through this difficult process. Um, there's always a sense of accomplishment doing that. You made me so, think of something. This is my uh, friend, Dr. Tom Jackson. We talk about making dentists feel less alone, Tom, as a big mission we do, but making dental students feel less scared. It's truly amazing. I really want to thank you for all you did back then in making me feel less scared. And you glossed over it. I know you are a very humble guy, but you were part of a specialty program. Just for people knowing, what do you do in dentistry? I call you guys like the superheroes of dentistry. Tell people about your specialty. So at the program at Penn, I did the combined periodontics and prosthetics residency. And uh, what I decided to do uh, back in my hometown right outside of Chicago is to not limit myself to either one, but to be able to provide both of those levels of specialty in just basically a, an adult comprehensive practice. And um, you know, with 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 the prosthetics and the periodontics together, what what I'm able to provide is just a um, a different level of providing a solution for people that are looking for aesthetics or function or whatever the case may be. And you are home. You're you're home for special patients, right? You guys have signed up to be on the line to you know really redo people's entire smiles, redo what they're doing, and it's it's really awesome that we have you guys. Yeah, we tend we tend to sometimes be a funnel for the uh, for the hard stuff, and, and that's okay too. <laughs> um, so now you're here as an awesome sponsor. So tell our group what you do to help Dennis cry less inside. So uh, well, to be quite honest, I think that as dentists, we're all engineers to a certain degree. And every day we're faced with necessity, right? Like, boy, I sure wish I had X to be able to do Y better. Well, um, my own personal story is I was sitting with a friend of mine at, a, at an implant meeting and we were both um, very much um, excited about doing dental implants with surgical guides. You know, I think that's really on the digital workflow trend, uh, but we both independently agreed that we're both seeing problems with surgical guides. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and it wasn't that it was an unknown problem. We know this problem exists. Just nobody wants to talk about it because surgical guides are so awesome. Nobody wants to yeah. acknowledge the fact that there may be a problem with surgical guides. And the problem is, the necessity is that we're not keeping the bone cool. Yeah. You know, back, back in the days of, of Branamark and, um, original implant protocols, it was all about irrigation. And studies were done on irrigation. And what's the bone temperature that you can't exceed before uh, you know bone starts to die? And this is all known. This wasn't new stuff. But I think what, what is new is that uh, the method of irrigating a dental implant osteotomy is different with a surgical guide because the water can't flow to where the problem is. And I want to interject because even the my mentor, Steve Browns and um, Bob Levine's who taught me at Einstein, don't burn the bone was burned into your head, right? You know, yeah. don't burn the bone. So I'm just sort of reinforcing that don't burn the bone has been part of implant dentistry, whether you're doing the first implant, the 2000s implant and today. And you're I'm just also sharing that when you do these I'll call them fancy dancy guides. It can prevent the irrigation from getting to the osteotomy. Am I correct with that? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Especially like in the most common tooth borne guides where the, where the adjacent teeth are helping to support a piece of plastic with a sleeve in it, um, the, wa the water never gets there. Yeah. And we know this. And so it's not like we just don't irrigate. We just have to irrigate differently. 
which is the problem. The problem is, okay, we know that we're not going to burn the bone. We, so, so we ask our dental assistant to pick up a monojet syringe in the midst of all this confusion, try to get the tip of that monojet syringe underneath the guide, hold it there, push out the ear again, the saline, while you know the surgeon is drilling, stopping and starting to reload that syringe. And inevitably, the surgeon's just going at it and um, the, the bone can be compromised. And I, you know, in all fairness, I think that it doesn't happen every single time with the surgical guide, you know, meaning not irrigating correctly. But when it does happen, it's catastrophic, yeah. right? I don't think really people are losing a lot of implants because of this, because when the when the heat is generated, it's generated with the pilot drill at the cortical bone, right where the fixture level is going to be, right where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, right where the abutment meets the implant, right where we want the bone to be most healthy. And what's happening, and this was my own personal experience, every once in a while you see some weird bone loss patterns, some weird crustal bone problems. Yeah. And the problem is the implant is integrated. This patient's going to now live with this implant for hopefully the rest of their life, but with problems of peri-implantitis, yeah. maybe aesthetic compromise, you know, whatever the case may be. And so um, recognizing this necessity to make irrigating easier, I've created this adapter. It's called the Irriguide Adapter, which can be retrofit to any surgical guide. Now, just to be clear, th this is not a new idea. This has been studied in the literature. Not only that the bone temperature of using a surgical guide is hotter, but that internally irrigating these guides is better. But so let me ask you as you continue. So you can use your ear guide. Yeah. Now, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is it kind of can you use it with any system or just specific systems? Any system. So it's it's dental implant independent. And just because you know our dentist people, um, they have the special ability to be what I call dentist in chief. You know what that is, uh, Tom? It is they will spend more money on their golf swing, which yeah. and they still stink at golf than their practice. But that's yeah. us dentists. I can say yeah, I am one. What does using the ear guide, what are they going to invest in per case when they do that? Well, so there's two ways to do it, right? If you're printing your own guides or you're getting a guide back from a non ear guide partner lab, um, there's a starter kit. Starter kit starts at 250. Uh, it gives you everything that you need to be able to install a guide. And to be able to install the guide literally takes less than three minutes. That's Sometimes it. I forget to do it ahead of time. So I'm doing it while the patient's getting numb. Uh, but to purchase that starter kit right now, it's 250. And then there's, there's refill kits. And then the more ear guides that you buy, the cheaper it becomes. But, you know, it's roughly going to cost you anywhere from $25 to $30 a, 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 um, a, an adapter. And just because Laura Brenner might start placing implants again, I'm just joking. I don't think she will. But just in case you want to, for context, because we're teaching people here, the cost to place most implants probably ranges between $1,300 and $2,300, right? We're probably... Most implants are probably placed in those fee ranges, some higher, some lower. But this is a very insignificant additional cost. And as you talked about, a failure could be catastrophic, not just financially, emotionally, because you feel bad when that happens. Yeah. And so when you talk about fees to the patient, there's the implant fee, but there's also an ADA code for a surgical guide. Yeah. And so in my practice, um, you know, I'm not looking to retire off my surgical guide fees, but I make enough on my surgical guide fee to cover the cost of the materials and also the cost of my time to make them because I print my own guides. And so there's there's no reason why there should be an out-of-pocket negative in using a surgical and guide. I want to add, Tom, this yeah. is a good discussion. Um, I, when patients say to me, hey, doc, what would you choose? I don't like to answer. I like to say, from what I said, is maintaining your tooth more important than but I don't like to put myself in those decisions. I like to explain. And though, or but I want I want a root canal done with a rubber dam. Would you agree? Absolutely. You so uh, absolutely. What I think is great, and you know, hopefully the audience can hear from this. Would you want your own implant placed with an eerie guide? Your own implant in your own mouth. Of course. And and every single one of my patients gets an eerie guide. I mean, so that what it is it the patients can't order an ear guide. Like it is Chick Fil A, right? They don't know that it. Right. So it's up to us to say, this is how we would want this procedure completed on our family member, ourselves, our team member, 
and then start thinking about incorporating into what we do. So it helps everybody, the Absolutely. patient, our sanity. And now as we kind of wrap up a little, Tom, tell me, how's it been going with your customers, your clients? Are they using them monthly? Are they using them all the time? How, uh, you know, I know you've, you, it's not that you've started recently, but tell us some of your customer success stories or someone say, Hey Tom, I'm glad I got yeah. the career guide. Yeah. So believe it or not, it is kind of recent. I launched this in, um, November at the AAID. Oh, nice. It, it, it took a little while to get FDA clearance and approval on the whole thing. So there's really two channels um, that um, that I could give like a little success, success story. One channel is that I have preferred partner labs that you could look at on my website that have, uh, that they understand the significance of this and they offer them to their surgeons at the time of design review, right? And they install them for them because sometimes dentists don't want to do it. They don't want to mess around with like, you know, lab equipment and it shows up like, like on their doorstep already installed, ready to go. But, but the best story that I have, and you may know him, he's Brad classroom from Wilmington. Do you know Brad? Yeah, yeah. I know the name. Yeah. Yeah. Good friend of mine. Yeah. He was, he was ahead of me in the program, but if I ever want like an honest opinion, I call Brad. I go, Brad, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about this? He'll, case? Tell, he'll tell you if your outfit looks stupid. He's that type of guy. He doesn't. He doesn't absolutely. Know. Absolutely. The only thing that I can say about Brad is that I can beat him in golf. But other than that, so I shared him this idea. He goes, Tom, this is not necessary. I can irrigate my implants and they're fine. I said, no problem, Brad. Let me get you started. He can't get enough. That's he awful. won't stop yeah. ordering them. Not I mean, because you have to understand there's the cooling component and that's like the obvious, but it makes the procedure so much easier. Your assistant doesn't have their hand in the field. They're not starting and stopping. It's clean. It's easy. The visibility is awesome. It's so much more efficient. So for Brad, it's like he can't get enough of them. And that's my, uh, that's like. That's, my well, story. Tom, that is, I mean, I want to tell people they can text guide to 215-543-6454 to learn more. Uh, Tom is an amazing clinician, amazing supporter. And that's what you just tell Brad, hold up his phone and say, at first, I thought the ear guide was not necessary. And now I'm going to tell you, I use them all the time. So that's all you need. Yeah. To get down and say, well, thanks so much for sharing with us, Tom. Appreciate you having me as a friend and sponsor the group. Hope we get the high five in person. Soon. I hope so too. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. So we've had an amazing show here. Please, if you got to this point, text stream to 215-543-6454. Learn about DSOs or private practices, which way to go, making the biggest decisions in your dentist's career. Thank you to everybody who is on here, from marketing to side gigs to make selling your dental practice to irrigating implants. That will, that's what we do at Talking Nachos. If you'd like to be a guest on Talking Nachos or find out more about what we do, just reach out to us at salsa at dentalnachos.com.